guys and welcome to my manga pickups video for the latter half of June 2016. So this is just the stuff that I've received or bought in the last couple weeks. I'm sure you know the drill by now. Um, there's a couple different things here so hopefully you'll find something interesting and uh, check out some various series because there's some stuff that I don't know whether a lot of people are reading or not so hopefully uh, I'll encourage you to try something. <laughs> first off is the very first volume of a new series released by Vertical and that is Devil's Line by Ryo Hanada. I really 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 enjoyed this uh, book when I saw the cover for it and the release date for it, I was intrigued, but I didn't really know what to make of it. So rather than ordering it, um, you know, and go going into it blind, I did try um, the chapters online first, which is something I really never, ever, ever do. I usually only buy manga if I know that um, I know the source material or I know it beforehand, like I've seen the anime adaptation or um, I've heard really good things about it. I've heard reviews about it from people I trust. So <laughs> for me to go out and try the the like online chapters for this series was really unusual for me first off. But once I started reading it, I couldn't stop reading it. So I've read the entirety of everything that was available online and honestly this is really it's hard to explain why I lo like this series so much. A lot of people have called it like a Tokyo Ghoul ripoff or like a clone and I really wouldn't see it like that. I don't I wouldn't fully agree with that because although even the the series both revolves around a character who is kind of in this marginalized group within society um, insofar as they're like they live in a world where um, ghouls and you know or devils exist and are kind of terrorizing humanity and there's groups that like just straight up kill people for you know laughs and then there's others who want to um, kind of coexist with humans peacefully and not get into any trouble. It's still kind of that search for humanity that Tokyo Ghoul um, has, especially with its main character, um, Kaneki. But I think what makes this different is that there's a romance involved as well. And although there's like a million series both, you know, Western and uh, Eastern that focuses on, like, the romantic forbidden love between, like, a monster and a human. Um, this does it really well. Like, really well. I'm not a fan of that trope pretty much at all in general, but there was something about the characters in Devil's Line that really made me want for their relationship to succeed. I think they work really well as a couple and you can for the main character um his his personal struggle with like fighting against his devil side and then wanting to be in a like a relationship with this girl is done like it's done really well. I don't know how to explain it other than that. It's just really it's it's something you want to root for them. Plus, as well as that, it does have a really intriguing storyline of um, like the ghouls within society being targeted. Um, but they're they're victims, but they're also aggressors. So there's it's like a case by case basis. You can't fully judge um, a devil by you know devils in general. So. It's similar to Tokyo Ghoul in that sense, like not every ghoul is a, like a bad guy, but also not every ghoul is a good guy. <laughs> like you got to be wary around them, but it's very intriguing. I think it's got 
a really good basis for storyline. Plus, like I said, the relationship is done really well, which is not something you typically see in this sort of uh, genre of like monster human romance in where, I don't know. I don't know. In my opinion, I don't think it's necessarily done that well in other sorts of media. So to enjoy it as much as I have been in this series was a real surprise. Um, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying that this series is completely surrounded by romance. It's not. It's definitely not. There is other stuff going on. Most importantly, uh, the main characters. Uh, fact that he's working with police to help um, solve devil related crime plus you know all different sorts of government conspiracies and things but yeah it's it's really good um, I encourage you to try it even though um, a lot of people have said it's like a Tokyo Ghoul clone and it's not done as well this book um, is kind of more of an introdu introduction of the characters and their relationship with just kind of a hint of the larger story at the end. But, um, <laughs> like I said, I couldn't stop reading the chapters online, so knowing what's coming as well, it is really good and it develops into a really interesting and intriguing storyline. Um, also, as... Like, reading it and, and sympathizing with the main character, you can really, like, get a sense of desperation and kind of, um, in, like, that feeling of futility that he has about, um, wanting to be, or, like, wanting to befriend and be romantically involved with this girl, but then also, like, having to come to terms with the, like, really violent and sexual urges that his demon's, like, parentage has caused him to, re like, react whenever he's with her. So, yeah, that struggle is really done very well. I know it's kind of old hat for a lot of this genre, but it in this series, it's done really well. Also, another thing, people don't really like the art style, but it does improve, in my opinion, and also I think it just the style itself um, really matches the sort of story that it is. It's a seinen. If I didn't mention that before, it's a seinen. Um, and yeah, I, at this point, what I've read of Devil's Line and what I've read of Tokyo Ghoul, even though they have a, the same basic premise, they're two com like very different stories that do different things with like what they introduce. So... If you're going into it thinking that it'll be another Tokyo Ghoul, um, don't... They're similar but not the same. And I think one is very, very, very much typically seinen and one is very, very typically shonen. Um, even though I do know that, you know, Tokyo Ghoul gets darker and blah, blah, blah. But I haven't read the entirety of Tokyo Ghoul, so um, I'm gonna curb my opinion on that but devil's line try it if you haven't um it's really good and i can't wait for the next volume even though i already know what's going to happen like i've said uh, but i've talked about this already for way too long and i'll go on to the next one um next volume is volume two of mysterious girlfriend x also released by vertical um yeah, I really love the series. It's a coming of age um, story romance um, focused around drool, but it like like I said with the first volume, if that kind of weirds you out, it's not meant to be necessarily like some weird kind of fetishy drool thing. It's more so that's how the author represents this sort of the intimacy like growing intimacy between the the main couple and it's done in a really clever and interesting way the anime is very very good the manga is also very good the manga is complete it's um, going to be done 
within six of these omnibuses. But yeah, it's certainly, uh, it's an exploration of uh, romance and kind of discovering yourself and um, your romantic partner and like how, like what each other's limits are and stuff like that. It's hard to describe, but it's really great. So if you're looking for a shonen romance that does a lot of things right, uh, Mysterious Girlfriend X is probably one of the better ones out there, especially currently being released, and I definitely recommend it. Next is volume 15 of Noragami. Um, Arachitoka has just always written such a wonderful story with with Noragami. The sorts of things that happen in this volume are both hilarious and then horrifying. It's really in interesting to see how the story develops because you can never really tell um, which way it's going to go. Um, yeah. If you're not reading it, then I don't know what to say to convince you to watch Noragami or watch or read Noragami at this point. It's honestly just a great series. It gets infinitely better as it goes on. The first volume is enjoyable, but honestly about volume 4, volume 5, it really hits its stride and hasn't really let up since. So definitely try it. It's a great series and one that I really look forward to overall, even though we're almost caught up with the Japanese releases now. So um, in the next subsequent volumes, we're going to have to wait a lot longer for each new volume. And that's going to be really hard because it is really hard to stop reading this series once you've started. But uh, what can you do? Next is a very old release. Um, this was printed in the late 90s, I believe. Yeah, 1997. Uh, released by Viz, and this is Moto Hagio's A A Prime. And as you can probably tell, this is flopped. So everything, all the art and everything has been flipped, so it actually reads it from left to right rather than right to left, which was pretty much the norm of uh, just manga releases before the early 2000s. Yes, but this is one of Moto Hagio's uh, more famous pieces. It's really great. It's sci-fi, it's romance, and it's just classic Hagio. I really look forward to more of her work that is coming out in the future. And yeah, this volume I found for $10 shipped. So that was like hugely amazing because this is... Very, I mean, it's an old volume, so it's very hard to find. Um, and it's really the only release this series I ever got. So, yeah, I'm just really glad that I was able to find something a little bit different from the norm. I think most people don't really have any flopped manga in their collections. Um, so, yeah, a little bit, a little bit different. Um, next is Volume 7 of Tokyo Ghoul, obviously the most recent release. This is kind of where the anime, the first season of the anime ended, and things kind of branch out differently. And it's also the point where I've heard the art gets better, and I would probably agree there is a marked uh, like improvement of the like style and overall. Tokyo Ghoul, I know a lot of people love this series. I do find it very enjoyable and it's certainly got its intrigue. Um, it's not like my favorite series, but it's certainly interesting and I do look forward to the next volume, especially considering that it'll be a story that I haven't previously seen. So yeah, Tokyo Ghoul Great series, and this this volume is actually the turning point for the main character. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the story develops after this point. Next is kind of a rebuy. Um, I found this for five dollars. 
in a local store. Oh, like, I don't know if other countries have this, but we have like a chain of bookstores called the Big Book Sale here. And usually things are like between five or like three and ten dollars. And they're generally like ex library books or stuff, you know, old stock that bookstores couldn't um, sell or they have like a little bit of damage or whatever. So I, there's one in the city uh, near where I work. So the other day, for the first time, um, I've walked past it a lot, but I went in for the first time on last weekend just to like, kind of check out what they had. Um, and I found this, which is Antique Bakery Volume 3. I already have this book, but my copy is very beat up. And this copy is not very beat up. So I'm really glad. Um, and considering like a lot of the series or the stuff that they have is ex library, etc, etc. Um, finding one in such great condition for $5 was just really surprising. This book is quite easy to find. It's not out of print or anything. Well, technically it is, but they're, the print runs for it were so large that you can still get the volumes quite easily. But yeah, volume three of Antique Bakery, it's <laughs> another Fumi Yoshinaga series that I really enjoy. It's probably um, one of her more uh, accessible series. They made an anime out of this, this show or this series. So um, try that if you haven't seen it. it I, I believe the entirety is on um, Nozomi or Write Stuff's YouTube channel. That's where I watched it the first time before I owned the DVD set um, for legal streaming there, that is. Uh, it's a great series, very fun, very Yoshinaga. You can really see her influences. She definitely has her love of food, like, just within this whole series. And the characters are just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so it's the story of this main character here opening a bakery in order to try and find the man who kidnapped him when he was a child, because when that happened, he was only ever fed cake. So he's hoping to, like, lure him into his store, and I don't know, like, I don't really know what the plan is, and, I like, there's really no plan into, like, what he would do if he found him or whatever but it's very it's interesting it's really interesting it is definitely a character piece it has four main characters three of which you can see here the final one um being his pastry chef who works um at his bakery yeah it's definitely one for you to try and as you can see on the cover it does say winner of the kadansha mango award which is a japanese award yeah, it's really good, and I'm glad to have found a copy for so mm, cheap and in such good condition. So now I can replace my old copy. And finally, my last manga that I got this month is Volume 2 of Princess Jellyfish. This is uh, Volumes 3 and 4 of the regular edition yeah, if you haven't read or seen Princess Jellyfish, it's that's a real shame because it is a fantastic series. Um, it's really fun, very uh, relatable. If you're um, not exactly not normal, but if you're not exactly part of the popular crowd, I think a lot of the characters are very uh, relatable, as well as being funny. And the artwork is just, I mean, very stylish, but the color work, just everything is wonderful. I really, really enjoy it. Um, yeah, I cannot wait to read more. Uh, it's a Jose series. If you haven't seen it or tried it, check it out. The entirety of the manga so far, I believe, is on Crunchyroll. So you can, if you have a Crunchyroll subscription, you can actually read it on there for free. Um, and the anime series has been released by Funimation. It's a great adaptation of the series, even if it's a little short. But yeah, Princess Jellyfish, the 
story of one jellyfish otaku, her cross-dressing friend, and their bid to create a fashion label to save her her building that she lives in. It's a great series, a lot of fun, and I definitely recommend it to pretty much anyone. It's even though it's a Jose, it's really um approachable, I think, for most people. It's very funny. It is a comedy first and foremost. Um, even though it does have romantic elements to it. It's just a great read. So yeah, that was pretty much well, that was everything that I got for this last couple weeks. Um a lot of different <laughs> mix here I think. Um, certainly some things that I don't necessarily think a lot of people have tried or read or you know ever experienced. So yeah I thought I, I think that I got a good mix of stuff this month and uh, I read all of it so just waiting for the new stuff to come out. Um, but thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye till then!